Hello again. <laughs> Darn it, I forgot how I used to say that. Jack, let's rehearse the commercial once more. We'll be on the air in just a few minutes. Uh, later, Don. Jello again. Jello again. <laughs> Jello again. Mary. <laughs> Mary, I'm nervous enough without you throwing me off. We'll be on the air in a few minutes. Why don't you study the script? Some script. I went through it five times and I can't find a single joke. Well, hold it up to the light. There must be some there. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I, I don't ever remember being this nervous on an opening broadcast. I guess I'll be all right as soon as I get my first laugh. That may take us clear into April. <laughs> Can you stop being so pessimistic? You got plenty of funny stuff for tonight. Yes, Jack, I wouldn't worry about the script if I were you. By the way, have you got the same writers you had last season? You mean Scum and Abner? <laughs> Yes, they're still with me. Incidentally, I wish they'd get here. The last routine needs fixing up. Where are they? Oh, they're across the street at Roseland, dancing with each other. <laughs> the bald-headed one thinks he's Yolanda. <laughs> oh, well. Jello. Jello again. Three minutes to go, Mr. Benny. Holy smoke. Gosh, I don't know why I'm so jittery. An old trooper like me. Why should I be nervous just because we're broadcasting from New York? Well, maybe it's because you can remember when the Indians were here. <laughs> oh, quiet. I tell you one thing, Mary. Nervousness is a sign of temperament, and it proves that I'm a great artist. Hey, eh, Don? Yes, Jack, you certainly are. Yep. What that fat guy won't say for money. <laughs> You, you keep that up, Miss Livingston. And when you get your first paycheck... Dennis, Dennis, if you want to practice, go out in the hall. I'm all on edge the way it is. What's the matter, Mr. Benny? Well, we've been off the air since last May. We'll be broadcasting in a few minutes. Aren't you nervous? No, I'm happy. It'll be fun to start eating again. <laughs> what? Why, why, Dennis, you poor kid. If you needed money for food this summer, why, why didn't you come to Uncle Jack? Uncle Jack's rates are too high. <laughs> now, wait a minute. When Kenny Baker needs money, Mr. Allen doesn't charge him any interest. He's very liberal. Listen, liberal. Listen, kid, Fred Allen wouldn't give his grandmother a new tip for her crutch if he owned a rubber plantation. <laughs> Talk about saving money. He tried to get a transfusion from a Chinaman so he could live on rice. <laughs> Imagine. I'd keep quiet if I were you. You took me to the store club the other night, and when the check came, you pulled a knife on the waiter. Well, where do they get that stuff? A dollar and a half for a steak sandwich. Who wouldn't complain? Who wouldn't squawk? Well, I'm getting tired of being thrown out of every place we go. <laughs> Nobody was thrown out. Now, listen, Mary. Two minutes to go, Mr. Benny. Yipe? Hey, I wonder... I wonder if the music is all set. Where's... Where's Phil Harris? There he is, looking out the window. Oh, yes. Gee, uh, has that guy changed? Huh? Gosh, he's so in love since he married Alice. Yeah. Oh, Phil? Phil? Have you noticed, fellows, the leaves are turning brown? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Phil, snap out of it. Now, now, remember not to play your opening band number too loud, Phil, because Don has to do his commercial over it, so, so keep it down. I'll be very happy to. Thanks. Hmm. See, while he's in such a soft mood, I ought to slug him. I may never get another chance like this. Eh? Now, Phil, come to, will you? Say, Jack, what? I'm not going to do this joke here. It's too corny. Where? This one here. Mary, that's a topical gag. We have to do them. Topical or no topical, I'm not going to say that you go out with a girl in Brooklyn because you can't dodge her. <laughs> Dodger, don't you get it? Mary, the Brooklyn Dodgers. That's a baseball joke. If I had a bat, I'd hit you right over the head with it. <laughs> a fine attitude. Now, look, I'm the boss here, and if you don't... Jack, take... hey, Jack, here comes our sponsor. Whoops, the sponsor. Oh, Oh, hello, uh, hello, Mr. Mortimer. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary and everybody. Oh, hello, oh, Mr. Mortimer. Hello, Bill. Hello, 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 hello Don. <laughs> well, Mr. Mortimer, we're just about set for our first broadcast. Are you going to listen to the show this year? I mean, this evening? Mm -hmm. Yes, Jack. And I hope it'll be funny. We don't want to get off on the wrong foot, you know. No, no, we don't. No, indeedy. <laughs> no. 
No, no, sir. No. You know the public. They can tune you out just as fast as they can tune you in. Oh, faster, faster. I mean, <laughs> yes, sir. It, it's up to them, all right. Uh, One minute to go, Mr. Benny. Okay, okay. Get ready, fellas. Now, Mr. Mortimer, you've looked over the script, and everything is fine, I hope. Yes, Jack. Uh, there's only one thing I don't like. Why don't oh, you... Oh, yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Wait till he tells you. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. Now, what was that suggestion, Morse Mortimer? <laughs> Mr. Mortimer? Uh, uh, what's wrong? Now, if there's anything you don't... Hey, Jack, here are your riders. My riders? Oh, back from Roseland, eh? Listen, you guys, where's our last routine? Look, we won a cup. <laughs> All right, you won a cup, you're wonderful dancers. Now go in the other room and fix up our last spot. On what? On what? Where's your typewriter? We bet it on Lou Loba. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, use a pencil, anything. Get it done. Okay, come on, Yolanda. Coming. Done. <laughs> Now, cut it out. Don't encourage him. Isn't that awful? You'll have to excuse him, Mr. Mortimer. Now, what was that gag you didn't like? The one Miss Livingston tells about your girl in Brooklyn that drives a Dodge. Oh, no, no, Mr. Mortimer. You've got that wrong. She drives a Dodger. I mean, I go. I go with a girl in Brooklyn because I can't dodge her. It's very funny. Don't you get it? Now, just what is there between you and this woman? Nothing, nothing, Mr. Mortimer. I don't even know her. It's only a joke, you know. Ten seconds. Stand by, everybody. Okay, come on, fellas. Let's give him a good show. On your toes. Well, what about that joke? All right, Mr. Mortimer, you're the boss. Take it out, Mary. Take it out. Take it out. I thought you were the boss. Not when he's here. Take it out. Take it out. Jack, Jack, quiet. We're on the air. Take it. Oh, oh, Jello again. Uh, pardon me. That's too soon. Shh, shh. Quiet, everybody. Quiet. We're on. Shh. J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Puddings coming to you from New York City, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with Hi, Neighbor. <laughs> Good news, the most exciting news in years for dessert lovers everywhere. It's news about Jell-O. Your favorite, everybody's favorite, the one and only Jell-O. But so new, so much better than any gelatin dessert has ever been, you'll hardly be able to believe it. And what's the reason? Why, it's Jell-O's new locked-in flavor, the most revolutionary improvement in gelatin desserts ever made. Before Jell-O made this discovery, gelatin desserts constantly lost flavor right up to the very moment you used them. But the new Jell-O is different. Today, by means of a new exclusive process, all of Jell-O's full original goodness is locked right into the little Jell-O particles for keeps, so time can't steal it away. Prove it for yourself. Buy a package of Jell-O. Open it. Notice that there's no sweet, fruity aroma, no sign of escaping flavor whatsoever. Then make it up. The instant you dissolve it, there it is. The clear, rich, vivid flavor of Jell-O, treasured up for your enjoyment by Jell-O's new locked-in process. Don't wait another day to try it. Get several packages of Jell-O, J-E-L-L-O, tomorrow. The flavor never goes away. We put it in. It's there to stay. played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time this season, we bring you our master of ceremonies. A man who has missed you as much as you have missed him, or have you, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, isn't it wonderful to be opening our season here in New York for a change? There's so much going on, so much excitement and everything. Yes, Jack, I've never seen the old town so crowded. Well, why not? All the new shows opening, the Lewis Nova fight, the World Series. Have you seen any of the games, Don? No, I haven't, Jack. I knew it would be terribly crowded, and I didn't want to get pushed around. Hmm. <laughs> Look who's worried about being pushed around there. Now, wait a minute, Jack. That fat stuff isn't going to be believable this year. I was on a diet all summer, and I lost eight pounds. Eight pounds, huh? 
Don, taking eight pounds off of you is like losing a homing pigeon. Look in your backyard, and there it is. <laughs> But speaking, speaking of crowds, Don, I went to Ebbets Field yesterday, and boy, those Brooklyn fans go absolutely crazy. Billy, you never saw anything like it. Yes, I read where a lot of people even had their clothes ripped off. You said it. Don, I can understand what happened to my hat, my tie, and my shirt. But how I lost my arch supporters, I'll never know. <laughs> my shoes were still on. <laughs> that must have been quite an experience. Oh, I wouldn't want to go through that again for... Oh, well. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hello, Don. Oh, hello, Mary. How are you? Well. Well, Mary, here we are in New York again. And believe me, we couldn't have picked a better time. Huh? Yeah, things are sure popping. Yes, sir. Jack and I were just talking about all the people that came here for the fight in the World Series. Yep. The hotels are so crowded, it's... Hard to get the accommodations you're accustomed to. Oh, it's murder. I'll say. Jack had to take a room with a bath. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute, sister. I always get a room with a bath. None of that walking down the hall for me. You know. <laughs> oh, no? No. Then why do you always buy hiking shoes with your pajamas? <laughs> Mary, you keep that up, and I won't take you to any more shows. You're not the only girl I know around here. That's right. You know, Don, Jack goes with a girl in Brooklyn because he can't... Whoop, 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 whoop. Hold it, hold it. Take it out. Take it out. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Mary, we can't do that gag. The sponsor's sitting in the front row. That's all right. He's asleep. <laughs> well, a big laugh will wake him up. I'm... Just remember, Mary, we're not doing any corny gags on this program. Correction, look who's coming. Hiya, folks, here's your little ray of California sunshine. Make me happy. <laughs> that, uh, that's plenty, folks. I'm the star here. Well, um, Phil, Phil, I haven't seen you since last June. Neither have I, Phil. Gee, you look great. Why not? I'm in love. I feel like a million bucks. Well, Mary sure agrees with them. Hey, Phil, did you bring Alice with you? Did I bring Alice with me? My baby's always with me. Listen to him. Did you fly or take the train? Who knows, Jackson? Who knows? <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Ah, folks, ain't love grand. What hotel are you stopping at, Phil? Well, you know them two big towers on the Waldorf Astoria? Yeah. We're living on a cloud right above them. On a cloud? Hey, Jack, maybe you can get one without a bath. Mary. Well, Phil, you sure got it bad. You know, I haven't been in... Oh, oh hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, folks, here's your little squirt of California orange juice. Applaud on me. <laughs> well, Billy, brother, how are you, boys? Ah, well, here we are, the Jello gang all together again. Well, have you been enjoying yourself, Dennis? Yeah, I've been listening to the World Series games on the radio. Those Dodgers are a cinch to win. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're a, so you're a Brooklyn fan, eh? They'll moiter them. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know about that, Dennis. Those Yankees are pretty powerful. Baloney, they're scared of Brooklyn. Scared? Sure, they were supposed to play at Ebbets Field Friday, and they didn't even show up. <laughs> well, well, naturally, it rained Friday. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Dennis, they don't play baseball when it rains. Now, look, Dennis, if you're so sure of the Dodgers, and they certainly had a tough break today, I'm sorry, Leo, but uh, how would you, Dennis, if you're so sure of them, how would you uh, like to make a little bet? I haven't eaten since May, and he wants to bet me. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot about that. I'll tell you what, Dennis. Right after the broadcast, meet me over at the store club, and I'll buy you a nice steak dinner. The store club? Why, Jack, I thought you just... Never got... mind, Don. Never mind. It's, um, it's a date, Dennis. Uh, meet me there. But it's always so crowded, Mr. Benny. How'll I find you? If you come at the right time, they'll throw them right in your face. <laughs> Mary, one more crack out of you, and you'll be holding that cake of ice in the new Olsen and Johnson show. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking for talent. Uh, now, Dennis. Yes, please? 
Hmm. Uh, time is fleeting, so how about entertaining us with a number? Are you in good shape for a song? It rained, he says. It did. <laughs> now sing. Wait a minute, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, where are you? I'm up here at the Lennox Avenue. If at first you don't succeed, roll them again, crew. <laughs> oh, shooting dice, eh? How much are you ahead? Ahead? Of course, if I was winning, this phone call would be purely social. Oh, oh, so that's it. Well, Rochester, don't expect to borrow any more money from me. But, boss, now look, boss, I'll get a gentleman, stand back. <laughs> Ro Rochester, who are you talking to? Some fraternity brothers who ain't too fratty. <laughs> Well, I'm very sorry, Rochester, but I can't advance you any more money. Look, boss, how about sending over that $50 I won from you on the Lewis Nova fight? The Lewis Nova fight? I told you before, I do not owe you that money. But, boss, I'll get a gentleman fold that thing. <laughs> Rochester, our bet was that Nova would be knocked out. Knocked out? Yes. Now, you see, Lewis couldn't have knocked out Nova because Nova had what you call a yogi cosmic punch. Uh -huh. He's been perfecting it for months. Uh -huh. That cosmic punch is something brand new. It's never been used before. Impractical, ain't it? <laughs> you don't understand, Rochester, and I'm not going to explain it to you, so goodbye. But, but wait a minute, boss. Gentlemen, please. <laughs> Rochester? Rochester, I'm going to hang up now and I'll discuss this with you tomorrow. You'll have to discuss it with my yogi because I'm going to be a spirit. <laughs> oh, don't be such a coward. Goodbye. I'd like to come to New York just once without Rochester getting into trouble. Sing then. <laughs>
That, uh, that was You and I, sung by Dennis Day, and very, very good. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, Mr. Benny. What is it, kid? Do you know where I can get a ticket for the game tomorrow? I'd sure like to see the Dodgers play. Well, I've only got a pair of them, Dennis, for Mary and myself. Do you want to go tomorrow, Mary? Sure I do. I paid for my ticket, and I'm going. <laughs> Oh. You speculator. You paid just what I paid. Walking. I'm sorry, Dennis. Why don't you give me your ticket? You've been out to every game and haven't seen one of them. All right, so I left my glasses in California. Anyway, I told you I don't need glasses. Go on, you can't even read the news flashes on the Times building without them. Well, those letters move. <laughs> That's why. You should have seen him last night running round and round the building trying to get the headlines. Oh, quiet. And now, ladies and gentlemen... But, Jack, what about those glasses you're wearing right now? Don, they came this morning airmail special, so I'm wearing them. Big thing over nothing. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... You don't need your glasses, eh? <laughs> tell them what happened in Ebbets Field yesterday. Nothing happened. You know, when you try to catch... Mary! That... What was it, Mary? Tell us about it. Well... <laughs> oh. <laughs> well... Jack and I went over to Brooklyn. And when we got to Ebbets Field, boy, was it crowded. I told him about the crowds. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, as Jack told you, he's left his glasses in Hollywood. So as we walked through the gates, he kept saying to me, Are you sure this is the place, Mary? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> uh, are you sure this is the place, Mary? Are you sure? Mary. Mary, where are you? Don't get panicky. I'm right here in front of you. Oh. Well, take hold of my hand. You promised to lead me. <laughs> now, stick close. The idea of coming to the ball game without your glasses. You know you can't see a darn thing. No worry. I can see all right. As a matter of fact... Whoops! Oh, oh pardon me, madam. That's all right, bud. <laughs> hmm. I mean, sir... So crowded here, I can't tell a man from a woman. Where are our seats? Uh, right over here. Follow me. Hot dogs, get your hot dogs. Get your red hots here. Hot dog, old timer? Yeah. Where are you? Where is he? Where are you? Where... Just follow the garlic. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Give me two hot dogs, buddy. You want the regular or the king size? <laughs> the regular will be all right. Yes, sir. Here you are. Thanks. This hot dog sure smells good. You said it. Oh, uh, pardon me, mister, but you're putting the mustard on my thumb. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. It just so happens that... What? What? What's that? What happened, Mary? Where? Who? What? 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 What happened? <laughs> Hurry up, Jack. The game started. Gee, I hope we haven't missed much. Where are our seats? Uh, right down here by the first baseline. Oh, nice and close, eh? Hello, Mary. Hiya, Jackson. What's cooking? Who's that, Mary? <laughs> Jeepers, he's deaf, too. Oh, oh, that's Phil Harris. Hello, Phil. What a game. What a game. Yes, sir. Who are you betting on, Phil? Cincinnati, Jackson. I'm in love. <laughs> and he's going to be a father. <laughs> what a guy. See you after the game, Phil. Here we are. Uh-oh. Hey, Jack, look at that. Where? Who? What? What? Look at what? Where? <laughs> Say something. There's a great big guy sitting in our seat. Oh, there is, eh? Well, I'll straighten him out. I'm sorry, mister, but you're sitting in my seat. So what? <laughs> Here's what. Look, bud, you, you'll just have to get out of my seat or I'll throw you out. Oh, you will, huh? Well, let's see you do it. Now, listen, pal, I don't care if you are a sailor. Get out of my seat. <laughs> That's a policeman. Oh. <laughs> Well, blue is blue till my glasses get here. Move over a little, Mary. I'll sit in half of your seat. Okay. What's that? What, what, what happened, Mary? What? Boo, boo, boo. What? What happened? What's going on? What? They called a third strike on Camille, and the Yankees are coming up to bat. Oh. Where do you get that stuff, you mad? Kill the Empire! Kill the Empire! Boy, she's tough. Isn't kill the Empire! Madam, why do you want to kill the Empire? We was once engaged. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's personal. I mean, it's personal. <laughs> oh, boy, what a game. Huh? Who, what, what? What are they cheering? What's going on, Mary? What? The DiMaggio is coming up to bat. Oh, boy, now there's a guy that can really hit. Hooray for DiMaggio! Ow! 
Madam, what's that right? That's my left would be right, I'd have killed you. Oh. Gee, there's a fan for you, huh? Yeah, the Dodgers sure are popular. You said it. Say, that gives me an idea, Mary. I just thought of a terrific gag for our program next Sunday. What is it? Well, you say to Don Wilson, Jack goes with a girl in Brooklyn because he can't dodge her. This same here? No, no, no. <laughs> Look, a dodger, dodger, don't you get it? It's a topical gag and the sponsor will love it. <laughs> it's terrific. I ain't laughing. When I want your opinion, officer, I'll ask for it. You see, Mary, when Don says to you... What, what, what's that? What happened, Mary? Mary, what happened? What, what? The Maggio what? hit a fly. Oh. It's a foul ball and it's coming this way. It is? Oh, yeah. Stand back, everybody. I got it. I got it. Get out of my way. Yeah, I got it. Oh, no, you know, lady, I got it. Look out, Jack. I got it. I got it. Ooh. <laughs> well, he got it. Throw some water on him. What? What? What happened? Who? Who? Where? Where? Where am I? What happened, Mary? Who? So you see, Don, that's exactly what happened when Jack went to the ball game yesterday without his glasses. Well, I'll bet you're glad you've got them now, Jack. You'll enjoy the game today. Oh, for heaven's sake. Are you going to believe Mary? Look, Don, here's what really happened. When Medwick hit that foul ball... That was DiMaggio. All right, DiMaggio. When DiMaggio hit that foul ball, I saw it coming my way. I stood up and caught it with one hand. You know, Don, when I was a kid, I used to play shortstop with the Waukegan Wildcats. Why, we used to beat the best teams in the league. Kenosha, Racine, Zion City, Highland Park. Why, there was nothing to it. Luscious red cherries, rich crimson cherry jello. Cherries and cherry jello. Put them together, and you have one of the most dazzling and delicious desserts that ever brightened a table. Next week's Jack Benny special now being featured by your grocer. All you need to make this grand red cherry mold is one package of jello imitation cherry flavor and one can of red cherries. And next week at most grocers, you can buy them both as a combination. And when you get them home, just dissolve the cherry jello in hot water as you usually do. Next, chill your jello until it's slightly thickened. Fold in two cups of canned red cherries, then mold, and place in the refrigerator until firm, and serve it with a garnishing of orange sections and mint. It's an easy recipe to remember. Just cherry jello and canned cherries. And it makes up one of the most enticing desserts you ever tasted. So get a can of cherries and a package of cherry jello tomorrow, sure. A special combination at most grocers next week. Remember, Jell-O's new process of locked-in flavor gives all the flavor, always. This is the last number of the first program in the new Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night, again broadcasting from New York City. Oh, Mr. Mortimer, did you like the program? Mr. Mortimer? Mr. Mortimer! Oh, don't wake him up, Jack. <laughs> oh, that's right. Good night, Joni. Good night, folks. Sleep tight, Mr. Mortimer. Remember, folks, when you order Jell-O tomorrow, be sure to order several packages of Jell-O puddings. There's Jell-O chocolate pudding, and a more luscious, creamy dessert you just couldn't imagine. It has a smooth, mellow flavor developed exclusively for Jell-O chocolate pudding by the famous Walter Baker chocolate people. And that makes every spoonful of this grand dessert a real delight. If you ever thought it was impossible to make a pudding the way grandmother could, well, just try Jell-O chocolate pudding. It has all the rich, tantalizing goodness of a pudding that's homemade. Yet it's so much easier and inexpensive. So when you ask your grocer for Jell-O, ask for Jell-O puddings in all three flavors. Chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. Honestly, Jell-O puddings are just like grandma's, only more so. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles. <laughs>